Welcome everybody back to the Friar Talk podcast and YouTube channel. Today we got some a little bit of breaking news. I don't think it's quite official yet, but it sounds like the Padres have you know decided who their next pitching coach is going to be, and that guy is Ruben, and I believe this is how you pronounce it, Niebla. That's what the site said it was pronounced like. So hopefully that is correct. Um, if it's Niebla, my mistake, but I believe it is Niebla. So he's a pitching. He was an assistant pitching coach for the Indians. Um, you go back and you look at like how long it's been since he's been kind of rumored to become a pitching coach. And there's articles dating back to 2017 um, where he was rumored to become the Mets pitching coach. So Chase, what do you know about this guy and how do you feel about this guy that it, it seems like he's now the Padres pitching coach? Hey, if this is all true and it's all happening, that's a win for the Padres, man. If you look at the way that the Indians develop pitching, they are like top top of the line like i don't think there's other than the rays there's not a team that develops pitching better you know they develop pitching like at, there is no pitching to come you have guys coming out of like shane beaver clevenger quantrill this year plus bauer had some good years they Corey kluber like they just develop pitching and you get you have new guys coming in like tristan mckenzie so they obviously know what they're doing having anyone come from that organization especially being an assistant pitching coach to that, if he brings what they did over there to the Padres, I think, you know what, everything's going to be fine. All We're going to be able to develop our rookie pitchers. Our pitchers that are struggling from last year are going to be really good this year, and they're going to have everything that they need. You know, the only thing that the Padres could do for this to be like a 10 out of 10 move is to hire more of them, like have him be the head pitching coach, let him bring in whoever he wants, let him kind of create his own little coaching staff and unit that he can do to help further develop rookie pitchers or guys coming back from injury or just try to fix guys that are hurt. Otherwise, you know what? This is a perfect, this is the perf, most perfect candidate other than Darren Balsley for this position. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um, you, you know, you brought up uh, him potentially bringing some of his own staff over. That was, that was going to be the next thing I asked you just because I feel like that's such a, a big part of this. Um, Actually, like one of the things that people were kind of questioning was why would you hire the pitching coach before the manager? Um, And I'll, I'll hear what you have to say in a second, but I think a lot of that may be because they want to put in a staff that they feel like can develop the players where a manager is almost like getting behind them. It is a little bit odd because typically like you'd have a, a manager come in and bring his own pitching and hitting coaches and, you know, all of his other coach, coaching staff. Um, but it's a little bit strange, but I don't know. Do you, do you think it's something that we should be worried about? Or do you think it's something where, hey, they are getting a good pitching coach or what we think is a good pitching coach, that should be a win in itself? It's a win in itself. I mean, the manager is going to have to long over the GM says. You know, that's kind of how baseball works. I mean, they have some say for the team. But in this case, no matter what manager that we sign, whatever pitching coach they brought, probably wouldn't be as good to the Padres or as beneficial to the Padres, I should say, as Ruben Niebla is. We've seen the Indians organization develop their pitching. We've seen them do it at a high rate. And they have a lot of – they develop their starters really well. Their bullpen's usually pretty solid too. So you know what? They're doing something right. They're doing something that probably the majority of the league isn't doing. You look at their team – that good on paper but they win games because their starting pitching is really good you look at the rays they sign a bunch of no-name guys that just end up overpowering because of their athletics department and their pitching uh their pitching staff like they know how to develop their pitchers they know how to look at these guys and how to make them work they know what they're struggling with and know how to fix them maybe this is the best scenario for us i mean yeah, the manager is going to manage the team and everything. He can bring his own staff, you know, to manage the clubhouse, manage first and third. But I think pitching and the bullpen is kind of its own separate entity in that fact. Okay, yeah. And and also, like, I do like the idea of bringing in someone from the Indians that's developed a lot of players because you start looking around at, like, what, what's there for this guy on the Padres? And you got McKinsey Gore, Adrian Martinez getting called up. Um, you have last year, you had Reese near, you have, uh, who else? Um, I know he hasn't played that much lately, but Reggie Lawson, um, you know, a lot of guys, Robert Gasser is just drafted. 
and then you have Kevin Cobb, mm-hmm. Morde Hone. I mean, <laughs> you have all these little toys that you can develop. And and not even to mention like those guys, but you Darvish needs to have a bounce back here. Blake Snell needs to have a bounce back here. We still are 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 hoping. You know, Chris Paddock figures it out and becomes the guy that he looked like he was his rookie year. But this could be a big win for him. Now, the whole thing with him is going to be, okay, how hurt is he? Um, definitely can, some concerning things happened at the end of the year where he was getting, uh, I don't know, it, it, it could be bad, but we don't really know yet. Um, so kind of the verdict's out to be on him, on if he's going to be playing this year. Uh, but if he's back, this is a guy that can really help, you know, take that. Now that he's developed that third pitch, really help him take it to the next level have a bounce back here with his changeup because his changeup wasn't very good this past season. Um, make some adjustments. I don't know if you saw this. There was a a quote. I, oh, I forget who it was. I forget which. In my, was it Kluber that he, this that he was that was on the Indians? Was it Kluber? I think it was Kluber. I, I'm not sure if this was who the quote was from, but it was basically one of the guys that was saying, "Hey, I had a I changed my my fastball to a two seamer." And like he wanted me to do this stuff and he was showing me this stuff on like how to adjust it. And then he threw like two pitches and the second one was like a perfect fastball that like painted the corner. He's like, Oh yeah, I got another pitch. I don't know if it was Kluber, but it was one of the starters for the Indians a while back. This is a, a quote from a few years ago. Um, but Niebla, he has his work cut out for him in terms of like, there's a lot of guys that can take that step to the next level. Um, even though the Potters had a down season, I still think they're very high expectations, especially for this pitching staff. Um, and we're going to see something too that's going to be tested is is he going to you know tax the bullpen like it was taxed last year and it's going to matter a lot on the manager too but how does he put them into spots is he going to get you know is Blake Snell's pitch count going to be down are these guys going to be able to eat up innings because uh, Isaac and me did a live stream earlier Chase and that was something that a lot of people were, t- were asking about is like we need to have guys that can come in there and throw six of innings opposed to three to five and I think that's huge and I think this is another step in that right direction but. Anything else you got on Niebla and, and really this hiring or potential hiring? Like I said earlier, I think it's the perfect candidate other than Darren Balsley. I mean, if you can somehow make, get those two with their both how well they can develop pitching and their pitching brains and just pick both of them in the same room, I think that is a, the best case scenario, but that's probably a dream. I don't think Darren Balsley is coming back. But, yeah, like you said um, – I don't think, you know, we have too much to worry about the pitching staff. I um, I think the only thing, if there is a huge improvement to be seen, is if he comes out during the games, he talks to the pitchers, and they settle down and get back into groove. Because that was kind of one thing that we were missing this year, is that Rothschild never went out. He never really left the dugout to go talk to the pitchers. And when he did, you never really saw an adjustment made. So I think that's something that we should probably keep a close eye out on. And two is probably let's see how many of these guys go deeper into games because they're throwing more strikes, their mechanics are cleaned up or their pitches, they changed the grip or something, and it finally clicked for them and now they're back to their old selves. I think, you know what, only time will tell, but I think this was the perfect hiring. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. Another thing that I'm, I'm really wishing for is less elbow injuries. Um, I think every single Padre fan is feeling the same way about that, like, just really concerned um, in terms of how many in, uh, pitching injuries the fighters have had. But I definitely think that, you know, this is a good hiring. It's going to be one of those hirings where it can really put them in the right uh, direction moving forward. So I like it a lot. Uh, that's all I have for today. So we're going to take off, but wanted to get something quick out here because it, it could be a big deal. This could be a really big move for the Padres. And one of the things that we've been talking about is really getting a good, a good coaching staff around because even though we weren't really big fans of Tingler, you can't put it all on Tingler. You can't use like a couple guys as scapegoats. Like there's a lot of structure, like structural problems within the Padres organization. And I think pitching coach last year was especially one of them. And so this could be a huge change for the Padres. Um, hopefully you see this in terms of how they add uh, pit developmental pitch uh, coaches in their farm system, how they, how many, how many guys they actually bring on their staffs, um, but also who they hire as their hitting coach, who they bring in as manager as well. So we're going to be on top of all these kind of, you know, hirings and whatnot, but thank you all for listening and we will talk very soon.